So when we enter the spiritual path, naturally there's a sense of urgency or at least a sense of aspiration that we'd like to move it along. We'd like to proceed, we'd like to grow and integrate as quickly as possible to get away from the suffering and the habitual reactivity. And the truth is, if you examine your own experience or observe anyone that you love or know of, that we proceed at the pace of integration. We proceed at the pace of integration and through regular deep practice, we cultivate our capacity to more consistently and more fully and more authentically abide as loving awareness in the midst of our up and down situations. So during our formal practice, one of the things that happens is that we reduce the elements of our experience. In the ancient days, they said from the 10,000 things, you might say from the 10 million fragments of distractions, we reduce our experience down to three things, to the meditator, the object of meditation, whether that's the mantra, the breath, or whatever it might be, and to the act of meditation, the meditator, the object of meditation, and the act of meditation. And as our practice matures, there is a uh, dissolving away of the boundaries between these three factors. They begin to merge the boundary separating them one from the other becomes thinner, more diaphanous. And as they dissolve away, we rediscover ourselves and we rediscover life itself to be radiance. So this is one part of the practice, one phase as you are, it's the releasing of fixed identity structures and worldviews and of conditioned memory tracks into the healing presence of radiance. And then there's the next phase, and that's the phase of re-entry, of re-entering the mind and re-entering the body in a renewed and healed or more healed form. And the renewed form that we return with comes from allowing the healing energies of the radiance to reform the patterns of our consciousness. So it's not something we're hacking or strategizing or figuring out. We are releasing into radiance and allowing the radiance to reform and reanimate uh, mind and body. And as we do this practice over and over, we become familiar with this experiential uh, reality, with the felt sense of releasing into radiance and being reformed. So it's this familiarity. Remember in Tibetan, the word for meditation means to become familiar with. We're cultivating familiarity, even intimacy, with this process of releasing into radiance and allowing the radiance to reform us. And as that familiarity deepens, we more smoothly and more efficiently and more lovingly go through this process of release, of integration and renewal. And we become really more and more capable of allowing the system that we are, that we inhabit, the mind-body complex, to consciously experience and even to relish this process. Now, 
as inspiring as the process innately is, we can also recognize this, that if we're too enthusiastic and that we push too hard, the system itself pushes back. And if we try to force the process of healing, of awakening, of integration, it's like an irony, to force integration, it doesn't work. On the other hand, we recognize that if we don't in some way engage, lean in, the system itself will tend to stagnate and, and it will require then more and more extreme wake-up calls to get our attention, to get its attention, and to re-engage us with the true purpose of this life which is to awaken, to awaken as radiance in the midst of our everyday, every breath situation. So the ancient maxim is to make haste slowly. If we practice, in other words, with sort of an underlying anxiety or emotionally driven urgency to be free, at a fundamental level, we will be reinforcing those very states of anxiousness and emotional drivenness. But if we're just going to lie back on the, you know, the divan, nibbling bonbons, it may not be likely sufficient engagement to facilitate the awakening process. So there's an optimal degree of intensity, an optimal degree of discomfort, of heat, that's called in Sanskrit and in the yoga tradition, tapas. Tapas is the fire, the heat that arises when we judiciously lean into our discomfort and lovingly move our system out of the stability of the habitual memory track structure, and then we move it into a place of instability for the sake of awakening. So this process of cultivating our capacity, which deepens our ability to realize, embody, and express radiance, that goes through three kind of movements, like a, in a symphony, three movements. The first movement is the movement of stability, where the system is in equilibrium and in a, let's call it, a partial state of health, a partial state of awakening. Okay, then we practice in order to move into the second phase or the second movement of the symphony of awakening where we move into instability the heat the tapas works and we are in, and the and the system is destabilized and the old patterns are disrupted they're disrupted for the sake of a higher level of health of awakeness of integration of wholeness but often that instability phase, that heating up phase, uh, that there will be parts of us that don't feel like this is a good thing. <laughs> um, nonetheless, it's a, st it's a necessary movement in the releasing before the third movement of reintegration, where a more awake, more illuminated, also more complex and deeper structure is integrated into our way of being. So what does this suggest? It suggests that the systems that we are part of and in the systems that we inhabit and live through, our personal, our individual body-mind system, our interpersonal systems, our institutional and cultural systems, 
are mostly in a state of relative equilibrium, and that means relative asleepness, relative awakeness, but mostly asleepness, and in that stability, uh, often in a rut. And that the systems themselves, or parts of the systems, will tend to avoid, run from, repress, fight with the heat. They will fight with the people and with the energies that, that are heating things up and that seem to be uh, behind this experience of instability. But what we know from our spiritual practice and what we can remember is that the, what's really behind the movement from stability to instability is a deeper commitment between your soul and the soul of life itself, between your heart and the heart of life itself, between you and the universe, between your being and the cosmic dreamer whose dream you have entered in order to learn the method, the method of dissolving into radiance and reforming into wisdom and love, of creating while maintaining the presence of loving awareness in all the ups and downs. That's what the cosmic dreamer has figured out and that's what we're here to learn. So behind the movement from stability and instability is life's evolutionary promise that, we, that you will be guided, that you will be carried on a river of awakeness. You will be car carried on a current of healing in order to release the patterns and the habits of self-contraction into the radiance of your true being that you might reform again as an agent of awakening and become a blessing in every encounter, every uh, moment of your life. So we need the tapas and we need the loving awareness. We need the heat and we need the sense of deep compassion with the recognition that when those are working together, we proceed at the pace of integration with an ongoing and profound sense of wholeness at every step of the way.